Welcome to Invictus Motors. We've got this Porsche 911 997.1 Carrera S. Before I can actually get into reviewing this, this is a 997 that's coming to us on a sale or return. So we do offer sale or returns. And if you're looking to buy a 997.1 uh, Carrera S, I think we're probably one of the best places out there purely because it gets board checked, it has an over rev report done, 111 point inspection, and you now get it with a one year warranty. That should give you all the peace of mind you need for your engine and gearbox. But before I can do anything with this car in terms of like a spec review or a test drive review, I want to do a cold start on it. Because if you come a little bit closer, it's very important to pay attention to um, these exhaust tips. The left side exhaust tips are connected to bank two. And it's the bank two that normally over the years, you can say as a result of not getting adequate cooling uh, and loss of compression. And that's why you get a bit of scratching or barcoding and eventually some scoring and you know your engine tapping over the years down the line. Uh, that's if the vehicle is not being maintained. With the 911 here with track roof. To have the engine rebuilt. And this was something that was previously supplied to our customer by RSJ and this customer of ours has had it for a couple of years so he reached out to us to do a sale or return on this car for him. So you can see the exhaust tips again if you come a little bit closer it's nice and clean. Um, that's the exhaust tips for bank two and these are the exhaust tips for bank one and what I will do next is just to do a cold start. Amongst the many 911s that we've had in stock, especially the 997.1 generation, um, there are bits and bobs that you would need to watch out for in terms of just upkeep, things like, you know, just make sure that the suspension is all intact, and making sure that the coolant pipes, uh, you, you know, some of the key uh, serviceable items such as the brake lines, your tandem pumps, your water pump, and just everything else that you need to be aware of. But most importantly, the business with the engine is on this. I mean, it's not something that I've cleaned and I wanted to do this from an absolutely cold start point of view. You can see the coolant is where it needs to be. It's slightly below minimum, could do with a slight top up, but this is still a good sign that you're not having you know, a whole load of coolant disappearing from the vehicle. So a good way of knowing um, if your coolant pipes are actually leaking or not. I mean, this is completely normal. You are going to get some loss of coolant uh, over the years. You can see the engine mounts both to the left and to the right there. They're also in very good condition. And just started up sounding absolutely amazing. I don't think um, I could have had a better sound come out of a 3.8997 Carrera S than this. It sounded exactly as you would expect it with that slight burble. I'll shut the bonnet and just rev the exhaust so you can hear what it sounds like. So this is from a cold start. I've let the engine run for maybe now a minute or so. And you don't want to rev it too much on a cold start either, but just gently um, to actually get you to hear what it sounds like from uh, a complete cold. And I was probably pressing the accelerator paddle maybe 10% or 15% at best. Let me invite you onto the inside of this 911 and just kind of show you what the inside spec is like. On the inside, you're straight away welcomed with the sports seats. Um, th these are basically like the sports seats plus with the hard back there that you find. And you've obviously got this analog steering wheel that you find 
in the Porsche 997. Still the hydraulic steering wheel, very engaging, and you've got the six-speed manual transmission. Let's actually now jump into it to go out for a drive. We're behind the steering wheel and buckled in, and let's go, my friend. The nice thing about the 997.1, oh, sorry, came out really fast there. My neighbor coming from the left. The nice thing about the 997 is, is personally, in my view, the best combination between uh, a classic and a modern 911. And that's why I call it the modern classic. And obviously, when it was first sort of launched in 2004, the biggest change from the 996 was the fact that the 996 had those fried egg headlights and the 997 went back to the traditional oval round headlights that you find in, in the 911. But they've kept practically most of the car in terms of, you know, mechanically the same. Obviously, the base was available as a 3.6 and the S was available uh, in a 3.8. So what you are finding here is obviously the interior slightly changed, obviously the suspension and some other components, obviously the front and the rear bumpers having uh, been transformed. But ultimately, it's similar, but not similar at the same time either. Because the 997, which is better than the Porsche 911, its predecessor, the 996, I mean, I almost find the 996 to be very outdated and really hard and stuff, and you almost want to fall out of love with Porsches. But the 996 is still, a, you know, a characterful analog 911. Now, in terms of spec, uh, performance-wise, out of the 3.5-liter engine, this produces 350 brake horsepower, 400 newton meters of torque. The 0 to 62 possible in 4.7 seconds and the top speed being 182 miles per hour. The 997 isn't, isn't about how fast you can go in a straight line. The 911 has always had the pedigree of what it's like to go around corners and go around bends and just beautiful, you know, countryside roads or mountain bypasses where this holds to the ground like glue. And the 3.8 Carrera S having the engine behind the rear axle is definitely a thrill to encounter. And I think one needs to experience something like this once in their lifetime. And this is by far out of all the 911s, you know, money being obviously to some degree a restraint. You know, you don't want to be spending 200,000 pounds. Otherwise, I would want a 2018 911 GT3 Touring. But this is this is this is what I would want, you know, sensible money, sensible budget, one that's looked after, one that's going to handle and drive like an absolute dream. You know, one couldn't do any better than this. So that's that's all from from me in terms of the way it, it, it drives like and handles like. Um, now on to the six speed manual transmission. The clutch is very responsive, plenty of life left in the clutch. And now I'm onto the second gear, doing about 23 miles per hour. I'm going to just go back around onto the main road. So even if you're doing some local driving, it's very comfortable to actually just... drive one of these. It's just a lot of fun a proper six-speed manual transmission. Incredibly fun, very engaging. And what this offers in a 911 is everything I would want in a 911. It just gives me the thrill that I want and the character of what a 911, you know, is meant to give you. The 997 gives it better than probably any other generation of the Porsche 911 and I don't think there's a much higher compliment that I can give to a 997 than what I've just said. So this is basically towards the end of the test drive bit of the video. If you were just here to see what it's like to drive you should watch it up until this point. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. This next section of this video I'll just briefly show the paperwork, when it's been serviced, what it's been like, 
and also I'll discuss the bow check, the over rev and the 111 point check that we would be doing on this 911. So thank you very much for watching the video today and um, don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye bye. Now in terms of the paperwork, Gareth, our current customer, he's had it since May 2021 and prior to him there are four former keeps of this uh, Porsche 911. So just a nice pack of invoices here as well. The tires changed in 2022. Some of the coolant pipes replaced as well. So overall, there were really no expenses spared. Uh, everything is in here. But let me just actually get into the crux of showing the uh, service history. These are meant to be serviced every two years or, or 20,000 miles. First registered in 2006. So first service it had in 2008, it's 16,000 miles. Second one at 30,000 miles. Th third one in 2012 at 38,000. Then at 41,000 miles in 2014, then at 2016 at 44,000 miles, and then in 2018 at 45,000 miles. Additionally, it was then serviced at uh, serviced by a mobile Porsche specialist, quite well known on Facebook, at 45,000 miles in 2020, and then subsequent to that in 2023, it had a service at 64,000 miles. I think at the minute it's done circa 65,000 miles as it stands. Um, so that's practically all the stamps and the service history of it. What it will come with from us is, as I said very early on in the video, 111 point check, practically checking all essential components on the vehicle, suspension, your brake lines, uh, your coolant lines, the tandem pumps, all major serviceable items, making sure that when you buy something like that, you're not having to then buy it from us, take it to a workshop to incur a 10,000 pound bill. Uh, and things like your alternator, starter motor and batteries are separately tested as well. And then not to forget, they get properly bore checked to make sure that there's no scoring on the liners and an over rev report done that it's not been driven in a very harsh manner, especially in the past 50 operating hours. So I hope you've liked everything that I've shown in terms of this 911. If it's something you're interested in, don't feel, don't, don't be afraid to get in touch. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and see you next time. Bye-bye.